Okay, today I'm in Ealing with uh, Chris Dixon. Thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us today, Chris. Uh, first of all, you, you seem to progress from being a part-time analyst on Coral TV to being suddenly in constant demand on racing TV and a formidable punting team with your brother, plus buying good horses. So in a few years, we need to know how, that, how that's happened. Yeah, a, a lot's gone on. Um, how did that all happen? Uh, well, can you start from the uh, beginning? You're sort of a team. Did your interest in horse racing start together, or did you, one of you G the other one up? Um, Martin and I both loved it from being pretty young, to be honest, Simon. Um, I was probably about 10 when we first got taken to the races at Weatherby one day, um, back to horse that won coming from a long way back and just thought it was an absolutely massive thrill. Um, and I remember the commentary that this horse was still in rear, still in rear, and then he, he charged down the outside. I, I just thought it was fantastic and such an adrenaline buzz. And to that point, I'd largely been interested in football. That was the sport that I was interested in as a kid. At, at five years old, I wasn't watching the derby or anything. Um, we did, as most families did, have a bet on the Grand National. Dad used to go in and you'd back four or five each way, probably have some terrible bets and, and, and just enjoy watching that. But Martin and I used to then watch the racing on TV. It was, I suppose, part of grandstand. It had been back then. I would have thought the BBC would have had certain races, and you were watching the football scores coming in. It was all just one program with sport, and that was when you, where you consumed sport on TV, wasn't it? And so you were watching it. And when the racing came on, we used to either bet two peas sort of against each other and see who won at the end of the afternoon, or bits of chewing gum or whatever it might be that you that you had as the stake. You'd have a match. You'd pick one each and. And, and that was how we, we sort of got watching it and then really got into it when we were sort of, I would have been 10, Martin would have been six, I would think, um, and uh, got into it then from going. And my dad was a farmer and so he wouldn't leave the country for foreign holidays. My older brother and sister sort of by the time we were that age weren't coming on holiday with us anymore so the trade-off was all our friends they were going off abroad and it sounded great we weren't allowed to do that because dad needed to be within a drive to get back home if anything went wrong on the farm and the trade-off was we went somewhere that was racing so i picked off loads of race courses the pair of us when we were quite young and we, we just absolutely loved it that's quite unusual for somebody that young to get so into it. Was it I suppose it was the racing and not the gambling in those days. Yeah, it, it was, well, <laughs> I'd say that, it was probably the gambling as well. <laughs> we, we enjoyed the racing, but the point of it was, even against each other, trying to get the better of the other one during the course of an afternoon. And um, punting became more of it, because Dad didn't, he, he wasn't a big punter. He wasn't a punter at all. He didn't really like the idea of punting, and my granddad definitely didn't. And they would have been reasonably strict. My granddad definitely was, and so, uh, the gambling wasn't really encouraged, but once I was old enough to get away with putting my own bet on, then um, I encouraged it, and uh, Martin didn't need a second invitation. <laughs> right, so, so you mentioned earlier that your first love was football. Now, somewhere along the line, football attracted you again because I understand you were an apprentice for Hull City. Yeah, uh, football was sort of the, the sport that I played. I was pretty good at it. Um, I ended up getting an apprenticeship at Hull. I did that for three years, and I guess that was when... I got more and more into the betting because you'd finished training by, so you, you turned up to the, the ground maybe at half eight, nine o'clock, you got stuff ready, the, the, the pros would turn up at like half ten, everyone trained, and then you were pretty much finished. It was pretty rare if you weren't finished by half one, two o'clock, really, there was the odd day where it wasn't. Wednesday was reserve games, so you, you wouldn't have Wednesday afternoon watching the racing, but because there was reserve games on a Wednesday, Tuesday was always a short day match on a Saturday for the youth team so you were guaranteed to on a Friday be out early we were supposed to go well we did go to college but I happened to have a college teacher that, that liked the racing as well and so we were still watching that to, to a degree and having a bet so um, you, you kind of had a lot of spare time in your hands my mates were doing their air levels and I used to get the train back from Hull to the little town that we lived in sort of half an hour away from Hull and uh, I used to go into the bookies um, into William Hill and Martin knew which days I would be in there pretty much and uh, he used to conveniently miss the bus to school <laughs> turn up and used to the, the willy mill in Driffield you used to walk in and the desk would be at the far corner and the, the double doors that went in were on the same side as the desk and there was a, the, those price finder machines and it was like built into the wall but it's kind of as a result jutted out a little bit from the wall so Martin used to make sure he walked in through the right hand double door 
slide up the back so that the view from the desk at the back was obscured and they couldn't see him for the price finding machine. We'd stand there, watch the big screen on the opposite wall and I gave him the thumbs up when he had to get out because they were coming to tidy up the slips and he used to scurry out, wait outside and then <laughs> come back in. Now, did, did the, the, um, did the punting put pay to your football career or did it just not pan out? No, it just wasn't quite good enough ultimately. I did three years and, and got released. I, I could have gone on and, and played probably um, conference or other non-league football, but I, I, I decided I wanted to go to university. Part of the apprenticeship scholarship as it had become by then um, was that you went to college for one full day and, and an afternoon during the course of a week. Um, so. I'd done well enough there to apply for university. I, I got into university and I, I decided that I was going to go and do that rather than carry on playing football. I, I played non-league football while I was at university, but um, yeah, I, it was more a case. I, I just felt that I might have a career till I was 22, 23. If I was lucky, then I'd be done with. And um, yeah, it just wasn't quite good enough to, to make it a, a fortune out of it. So, so, so while up. you were at a seat of learning, did your punting get more academic as well? Yeah, I mean, when I was playing football, you're on small wages as an apprentice. I, I was losing then. Um, you you kind of have to lose to, to learn to win, I suppose. And it was when I was at university that, that I started to think about wanting to win. I, would, I had more time on my hands, read a couple of books that, that I found sort of informative and inspirational at the same time. And um, yeah, eventually I, I started making it pay but it was a, a fairly long process and quite a lot of hard work and um, sort of uh, torturous days where you kind of, not torturous, but you, you kind of think why the heck am I doing this but it gave me a, a sort of determination to really want to win, focus my mind on trying to win. And what were the books that inspired you so much? Uh, uh, Nick Maud in Betting for a Living was one of them, um, I read that one at university and the main one had been a, horse, uh, a, a book called Picking Winners by Andy Bayer and the opening chapter of that book was just it kind of when you read it as someone that was losing but wanting to win at the time it, it kind of inspired you to think it can be done if I work hard enough if I find something to go at then then it can be done and he talked about the 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 tough mental side of things and that most people are losing but whatever you do you're having a good time while you're doing it so um, that was that, that was kind of the book that I suppose it probably changed the way that I thought about things and gave me even more determination to try and win. So did you have any actual successful punting mentors or was it all self-taught? Um, th there was people that you'd look up to. I think the, the mentors that I got along the way probably came further on once I was already winning small amounts but once I got a job at the Press Association after leaving university um, there was a fellow there called Nigel Burns that was big into speed figures and things and um, he, he showed me the, a few other books and things and, and I, I was interested in what he had to say. We used to sit there and have a, a lot of chats about things. Um, and then once I, I left the PA and I went to work for Coral as a broadcaster, through that I got to know Richard Hoyles pretty well, um, Graham Cunningham, Nick Luck, and, and they were kind of the people that set me on the, the Racing UK, now Racing TV path I suppose. Um, but they, particularly Hoylesey, I would have a lot of chats to him and, and um, I guess people like that. Dave Nevison, when I, I interviewed him when I was at university actually and um, I, I was looking up to him at the time as someone that was making it pay and he was buying and selling horses and things and um, it, uh, it seemed like a lot of fun. So there wasn't anyone in particular but I think talking to anyone that's bang into it and maybe winning maybe not but just someone that you think's pretty good they, they know a lot about it you don't always agree what people think but you can learn a lot and take little bits from people about how you might do things and learn bits along the way and I'd say there was a lot of people that that I was like that with but I probably learned more off Martin my brother than I did anyone and we he, he would probably say, say the same of me we kind of threw ideas off each other and looked at things and I, I would say he was probably the one most and probably likewise the other way with me and him. Now, I, I was talking to you before and I, I got it wrong that both of you work for Timeform, but yeah. Martin worked for Timeform. Yeah, Martin worked for Timeform. I couldn't afford to work for Timeform. Um, I left university, um, got a job at the Press Association. I would had an interview for the BHA uh, graduate scheme. One of the positions was at the Press Association. I'd already, through a link up with non-league football, been going in during the summer break from universities to um, 
to the press association and doing some work and I got a, a, a job there on leaving university and I thought there's no point in going to the BHA interview, one of the placements is with them, I had it as my, my third choice or something, um, if I got through and I thought I may as well just go and have a job and it was sort of 40 minutes away from where mum and dad lived so I could live somewhere for free and I got a job. I then had an interview at Timeform and was offered a job but my wife was doing a master's degree at York University and we couldn't have both moved, we just couldn't afford so we had to stay living with mum uh, mum and dad and um, I carried on working for the PA and then eventually left and went and started broadcasting. Right now, interesting you mentioned those books because I imagine that there's quite a few of those Nick Walden books on bookshelves for people watching this. Um, a lot of people read those books, they're still not professional punters or successful punters even. So what separated you two um, after reading them? What, what, what made you more driven to become successful? Uh, I suppose I, I got sick of losing money uh, and, and think and and I just felt that it could be done and I, I started like probably a lot of people doing my own speed figures and things which I don't do anymore but I think the mechanics of knowing how they work was useful um, Martin going to time form was a big thing because he learned a lot there about race reading and and he learned an awful lot and then we would be discussing it and I learned through him on on that front I suppose um, but I wouldn't say I'm a professional punter because I do other work but I do punt successfully and um, it's I suppose it's a mindset thing and it's a I don't know how you go about winning particularly but hard work is one of the things and just trying to stay disciplined. Now how does it it's strange that you both you both work together yeah you, you study form together so that's you're not identical twins or anything <laughs> so you're not telepathic so how does that work I mean do you both think the same have you both uh, learned the same and so you think the same we, dis we spend a lot of time on the phone chatting about things through races and whatever. Um, we would have similar views on, on how you look at a race, what things are of interest. There's bits that interest me that don't interest him and bits that interest him and don't interest me, but kind of all goes into the pot. A, a look, a, the way a lot of it works is I, I think that nowadays there is so much racing on that you, you can't be on top of everything all of the time. So we would both watch almost all of the racing at some point, either be it live in the afternoon or replays later on. Um, but at the start of the day we would split up the cards so if I happen to be working for racing TV on red car then red car would be the card that I would do Martin would pick and choose his way around the rest having gone through the cards picked out races that might be of interest and do more work on them and likewise if he's working and I'm not so we kind of split up the cards and then come up with a strategy of where the views are on those cards and, and play it from there so there's never a time where you, you both excitedly reach for the phone and you've come up with exactly the same the, one and it's a double star now? Yeah, yeah there, there is. The, there'll be the odd one where I suppose you, you're both looking at the big meetings we would both be looking at. There's, there is crossover on some meetings that we're both looking at and you, you ring each other up, I really like this today and the answer will be yeah, it's a very good bet, isn't it? And I suppose sometimes you end up having too much on those ones because you're both absolutely bang behind it. But we've got an awful lot of trust in one another and like there, there isn't really anyone that I would take a tip off as such and just back it because they said to back it apart from Martin um, because I know the, the process that has gone into it and I know that he wouldn't just and, and that's not to say someone else wouldn't have done a load of work to come up with it but he's the one that I, if he says back something I'll just back it um, and I would say it'd be likewise the other way but the rest of the time I'd, I'd probably want to just go and have a look at what someone had <laughs> said and make up my own mind. Okay so we, to finish this first part like I said at the beginning for the layman you've come from almost nowhere and you've had like a meteoric rise did you have a couple of really big breaks a couple of really good wins to set you on your way were you fortunate or has it just been a grind? Yeah I, I don't know if there's been a meteoric rise to anywhere um, in terms of the the work side of things I got some lucky breaks through having got a job at, at Coral as a broadcaster that introduced me to people that were working within the media and through doing sort of me interviewing them in a sense about races they kind of cottoned on that I maybe had half an idea and they suggested that I should try and do it so I did a screen test and ended up doing the work so I got some real good breaks from opportunities that were really provided by the likes of Nick Luck, Richard Hoyles and Graham Cunningham for me. Um, from the punting point of view it was a fairly steady grind of just winning a few quid each year winning a bit more um, and and then sort of steadily increasing the stakes being more comfortable with slightly bigger stakes year on year and um, getting to a, a position where I can spend it on other things. 